Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Microsoft Xbox Series S console. Now, this has been on the market for several years, but I would make the argument it has matured and really come into its own right here in 2023. And that's because it is a completely cloud-driven console, unlike the more expensive Series X that I've owned since launch, which means that here in 2023, it's really living its best life because if you have a subscription to Microsoft Ultimate Game Pass, Game Pass in general, then you already have the platform, the doors open to really make this a fantastic, affordable gaming machine. And then in addition to that, if you want to stream anything for regular content consumption purposes, it also is going to do a phenomenal job with that. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. I'll include a link in the description. And keep in mind that the $150 price tag uh, that I was able to get, uh, and excuse that I'm having trouble with the tape, but I do have some neck issues uh, for anyone watching the channel. Surgery isn't that far away and that'll change everything. But the point uh, I was making is that you know, I've owned the Series X since launch. Hopefully that's the only tape I have to open. Probably not. Um, and the Series X is the better console, but it's only the better console if you absolutely must have um, a 4K capable console. So this um, was designed to be a 1440p machine, which, you know, an incredibly popular resolution in the gaming world up until the last year, because now we have, everyone has access to GPUs that can manage 4K gaming and do it well, but when this came out, I was drawn to it because even though I knew I was going to buy the X, because again, 4K 120, um, physical discs, those were something I still wanted, and I looked at the digital console, meaning sans disc, and said, it's the future, but we're just not there yet. Here in 2023, I do feel we've gotten there because if, like me, you don't buy a ton of games for your Xbox, but you do use that Ultimate Game Pass and you wish that the console was smaller, uh, maybe designed with a little bit better aesthetics, not that I dislike the aesthetics of the X, I think it's a really nice console, that's where something like this comes into play. And this wouldn't be my primary, this would definitely be a secondary machine, but because um, the Ultimate Game Pass has gotten so good, I could easily make the argument that this is going to be worth it to more consumers than the Series X. Also, portability. You actually could take this with you somewhere. I would never dream of taking the Series X with me anywhere. Um, so, food for thought. Um, let's see what else is in here without damaging any of the, the camera gear that the box is colliding with. Um, but I think the only other thing we're going to see back here is the power brick, which is exactly what we've got alongside, of course... A standard controller and yeah that's it I mean remember the controllers retail for about 50 bucks so that in itself already is great um, no power brick let me go ahead and get this thing out of the way and let's talk about capability again so for me personally um, I love my Series X I think it's the best console on the market but I've always kind of looked at the PS5 digital and said I wish that Microsoft did that instead of doing this um, fact of the matter is it's so far out now that, you know, PlayStation has had so many problems with availability that it doesn't even matter um, what I've thought about the digital versus non-digital. Um, this is going to be a perfect console for my living room. And, you know, where you have your primary console is different for everyone. For me, it's in the bedroom, you know, 77-inch OLED, 4K, 120 hertz. It's beautiful. I can always flip over to, my, uh, you know, a home theater PC I've got for gaming as well. Um, but in the living room, that's where a device like this is going to come into its own. It's small, and in my living room, I really don't have any sort of um, shelf or, you know, area to keep electronics, um, you know, things like receivers or anything. I just don't have that going on. Um, but this is going to be perfect because as a streaming device, um, I don't have a streaming device in the living room. I have a, you know, it's a Sony TV that is Android TV driven, so it's always been better than having nothing, kind of independent. Um, it's also fairly old. It's not a brand spanking new TV like the OLED in my bedroom, but this is going to give us the streaming capability that we're really missing from that Android TV. And then in addition to that, uh, we're going to have, of course, access to uh, streaming services, which I, uh, gaming, I mean, uh, the Xbox uh, gaming services, which I think is really going to be the best part of uh, the experience here is that we will now be able to get on Game Pass and have access to 
that whole library, including new launches, on here. Uh, some of you will look at it and say, without a disk drive, I really don't see the utility of a console like this. I get it, but I think you're clinging to the past. I know the resale market for video games is another major reason. No one needs to explain that to me again. Gamer for life, so I'm all too familiar. However, uh, no one can deny this shift to the cloud. And if you're a PC gamer, which I have also been for the majority of my life, then you also know that you know, physical discs have been going away there forever. And I'm not saying I don't have friends who still go out of their way to find physical discs. I do. And I get it. Um, they want something physical that they can hold, something tangible. But again, at $150 or $200 to pick up something like this and be able to start gaming, start streaming, and even though it cannot do um, 4K uh, gaming, or it's designed for, I shouldn't say it cannot do, but it's designed for 1440p, that's really not an issue. Um, you have a Kensington lock, power port, so you know no physical brick, which is wonderful, HDMI out, two uh, USB-A uh, type A ports, and an Ethernet port. The storage expansion is really my biggest pet peeve with what Microsoft has done here. I mean, I have so many NVMe drives, and the fact that the best way that I can use an NVMe drive with this or a Series X is to hook it up and basically, you know, just uninstall or move games to the, you know, external storage and then have to, you know, drop them back on the drive. It's a big pain in the butt. And there's no reason that Microsoft couldn't, well, there is a reason, proprietary and, you know, a little bit of greed, which they all have. Microsoft's not unique. Um, that's the reason we can't just hook up an expensive NVMe drive and have it be an extension of the internal storage capacity. Uh, I think if Microsoft did that, it would be very beneficial. I think they would, you know, get a lot of support from their own gaming community. At any rate, it's not happening to, to my knowledge. Physical power button right there, another type A port. I mean, it's just a really nice little console. Of course, you can stand this up vertically, uh, vertical, horizontal. It doesn't matter. You're not going to damage discs. Uh, but that pretty much is it. Um, I will let all of you know what the experience is like. Um, I probably won't be doing a follow-up on this. This is an old console. Everyone's familiar with it. But again, as uh, a streaming and cloud gaming device at launch, I think this was a dud. In 2023, I think it's a score, especially because Game Pass has gotten really good. I would make the argument that you could have Game Pass and have this console and not need to buy any games. Granted, there will always be a title that you want that isn't on Game Pass. But I think you understand what I'm saying. And at launch, I couldn't make that argument about Game Pass and a piece of hardware like this. So I'm really excited to see the next generation because I think hopefully this is what it's going to look like. I mean, the whole current generation of console, uh, which is several years old, they're all PCs stuffed into small consumer boxes like this. I just want to see that continue to evolve and get closer to something like this being uh, the next high-end console form factor. Um, with all of that performance, going to be tough. But I think they can do it considering what we see happening in PC gaming. Either way, a steal to get this um, for you know a little over or a little under $200 because it's just capable of doing so much. Even if just to compete with something like my NVIDIA Shield, um, which can also game, but of course doesn't have access um, to Microsoft's um, cloud experience, which is in many ways, of course, superior. Uh, and then cloud gaming. Don't forget that. Um, that's a big part of what Microsoft is trying to offer. I'm not saying it's a perfect experience, it's not, but being able to launch and play games directly from the cloud without having to use any of the internal storage capacity is another big pitch. Um, it, it, it does work, I've played games like that. It is an ideal for everything, uh, but it's more of a beta experience, what can I say? Uh, but that pretty much rounds things out. I think it's a steal and I'm excited to set it up in my living room. It means you know being able to game in just another uh, part of my house, which may or may not be a great thing, but at the very least, uh, great streaming is going to be coming to my living room and eliminating the crappy Wi-Fi that I've been relying on in uh, that several-year-old uh, Sony TV, which of course is 4K. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.